Okay, so this is the virtual tour of Southwold, and uh, the, the idea of this is to give you a bit more of an idea about what Southwold's like and where some of the key sites within Southwold are. Normally we have our A-level groups working with us for two or three days at a minimum, and one of the first things that we do on the first day when they come to us is a bit of a tour of the town, essentially, and I uh, kind of act as a tour guide to talk them to uh, talk them about the main sites in the town, the main, main geographical issues, and um, to essentially kind of familiarise themselves with the street. So obviously at the moment that's not going to be possible. So with the use of Google Earth, I'm going to try and do my best to introduce you guys to some of the main sites around Southwold. So the first thing that you'll realise as you're driving into Suffolk is that this is quite a um, not remote, but it's it's you know, very much a rural location, and Southwold itself is a rural coastal town that sits on the north coast here. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit more so you can see where Southwold sits in relation to some other things. To the south of Southwold, there is a river, the River Estuary, called the River Blythe. There's a very nice village south of the estuary called Walberswick. It's actually one of the most expensive villages in the whole country to buy property. The average house price there is £720,000. Um, Southwold is considered a town and Southwold is kind of boxed in on three sides by very low lying marshland. So actually the town of Southwold hasn't grown all that much physically in a long time. Um, and instead what has grown is this area north of Southwold called Raiden, which is essentially kind of a large housing estate really. And lots of the people that actually work in Southwold live in Raiden. Lots of the people that own property in Southwold don't actually live in Southwold. About 60 to 70% of people in Southwold are uh, second homeowners or holiday makers staying in second homes. And so it's a town that looks successful, looks prosperous and nice in many places, but it's got lots of human issues. And I'll mention some of those human and physical issues as part of this tour, but also you'll have heard about those in the, um, in the other presentations that you've received too. So the idea of this is just to familiarize ourselves a little bit with Southwold and its streets and the geography of the town. You will arrive into town on this road here. This road crosses over a little creek called Bus Creek. You'll turn left towards the seafront down Pier Avenue here. But before getting to the pier, you can get to the pier if you like, but I'd suggest turning down this road here called Marlborough Avenue, or Marlborough Road, sorry. And Marlborough Road is where we've got um, quite wide verges and there's plenty of free parking. So I'd, I'd um, suggest that you park here and uh, the Geography Fieldwork Academy is based a couple of streets away from uh, Marlborough Road. So what will happen is perhaps if you give me a call while you're here, um, I can then come and meet you and I can then guide you into our um, centre here <coughs> in Southwold's Theatre. So the Geography Fieldwork Academy is based in a building called Southwold's Art Centre and it is the theatre for the town really. Um, it's a church property and uh, both ourselves and other groups use the facilities that are there. We've got exclusive use of a classroom, which is very much a kind of a geography classroom. And then we also use the theatre space, which is a large hall, really. And um, when we have our GCSE and Key Stage 3 groups in. So we'll spend a bit of time there getting familiar with, um, you know, what, what the plan is for the day, getting your equipment and making sure that you're OK for um, getting started with your data collection. So if this was a normal tour um, what I would do is I would also bring the students into our centre initially and then we'd go out and about and complete a walking tour of the town. The first place we'd probably head to is a street called Stradbrook Road and Stradbrook Road is just the street over from Cumberland Road, the road that we're based on, um, a bit closer to the to the sea and um, Stradbrook Road is a, uh, a centre really for gentrification. This is a, a street that over the last 10, 20 years especially, has undergone significant change. And you may not notice that unless you are aware of aware of it in Southwold, that this looks like a traditional kind of quintessential seaside town. And the idea of this being a place that's undergone change recently is quite difficult to grasp. But actually the change that's gone on in Southwold is the change in the population of the town and the change from a, a permanent local population to a much more transient, temporary second home affluent po population um, and this can be 
observed when you look closely at the building. So Stradbrook Road here used to actually be a quite a functional street in Southwold. It used to have pubs and shops. It's got the lighthouse on too, uh, but it's now purely residential. And um, these houses, a vast majority of them are second home properties. What I might try and do is drag our little man down onto this street here so you can get an idea about what Stradbrook Road looks like. And here it is. Very nice. That's looking north. And if I spin it around, this is looking towards the lighthouse and looking south. So the Stradbrook Road is one of Southfold's centres of gentrification, particularly in the winter months. In the winter months, um, we'll notice uh, for sale signs going up on the street, and then you'll notice um, skips arriving, and these houses essentially get renovated. Uh, you can see down the end of the street here, there's a for sale sign. And actually, when you come to Southfold, you'll know, notice that this house has been completely transformed since uh, this picture was taken. So what happens is you see the for sale signs going up. Normally, then scaffolding and skips arrive. And there's normally a period of you know, several months where builders go in, they gut the property. And gentrification is where you renovate and you improve and um, you, know, you invest in your property. And the people that buy houses in Southwold are very affluent generally because they have got enough money to be able to afford properties here. And they normally then are transferring them over from being a property that might have previously belonged to an elderly resident to being one which is much more modern and probably much more appealing to holiday makers as well. So they invest a significant amount on trans transforming their houses. So you will notice when you walk along the streets and uh, particularly on Stradbrook Road, that the level of maintenance applied to the properties are generally very high. They have nice kind of, you know, well kept out sort of side areas, but they're generally the roof tiles and the windows look good. And the levels of maintenance applied to these buildings, the level of care applied to them looks very high. And that's because generally they employ people to look after the houses. You can see this one here taken at a different time has got scaffolding up. And again, you'll notice that this is a very nice house now. Um, but yeah, this is an example of, of somewhere where um, there is significant amounts of gentrification ongoing. So you'll notice in the window of lots of these properties that they will have a sticker in them. There's a window, a sticker, win <laughs> window sticker here. And that suggests that this is a property that you can rent out or let from the holiday um, letting companies. And many of these um, properties will have those stickers or they will have perhaps a key safe on the uh, door. And, you know, there's kind of metal key safe boxes. I don't know if those ones have, but um, you can get an indication of for how many of these properties are holiday homes, holiday rentals by looking out for those kind of things. OK, we'll exit Street View here. The next place we will go to is Tibby's Green. Let's take us to Tibby's Green. I'm not sure where the camera has gone there. Here we go. So zooming into Tibby's Green, just zoom out a little bit further to just recap where we were. So that was Stradbrook Road here. And the nice thing I should say about the Fieldwork Academy's base is that we're only ever about 10 minutes away from anywhere in Southwold, whether that's the north or southern ends of the beach, about two or three minutes from the high street. But in all directions, really, we're, we're right in the centre of the town. Stradbrook Road then is towards the coast. This area down here is worth knowing about. This is Adnam's regenerated area. And it's a place called Tibby's Green. And this used to be Adnam's main distribution depot. I should say that Adnam's are a large brewery and they're based right in the heart of the town here. And they have an industrial centre where they make their beer. They have a distillery where they make whiskey and vodkas and gins. They import wines. They have now a range of cider and lager as well. They are a massive player in Southwold and probably Southwold's biggest um, employer. They actually have a ownership over a number of significant properties, including the Swan Hotel, several pubs and other hotels and second homes in the town as well. So Southwold's identity is shaped considerably by the role of Adnams in the town. And physically, not just economically, but physically, Adnams have played a part in redesigning this section of the town. So this is an area called Tibby's Green. Again, I can drag you into this area and drop you here. And you'll see that Tibby's Green is largely a residential site and um, it is made up of 34 different dwellings. And these dwellings have all been built in the last 10 years. So this is an area that was completed 
in um, a, an area of regeneration that was completed in 2011. This used to be, and if I take you out of this area and just turn back the clock, let's have a look at uh, whether we can do this. Um, if I click on the clock down here, there we go. I should be able to take you back to, let's say, 2005, that kind of area, that kind of time. Let's go to 2005. OK, yeah, lovely. There we go. So this has spun me around, which it doesn't need to do. So let's just make sure that this is north. Tricky. There we go. Lovely. Um, so this is the area of Tibby's Green as it was back in 2005. You can see the Geography Fieldwork Academy is here, Strandbrook Road here, the brewery here and this area 15 years ago had these large barns or you know industrial warehouses essentially um in it and, and that was where adnams kept their ingredients had their kegs had their kind of barrels of all sorts of their um you know equipment and things that they needed for the brewery brewery process brewing process and you can see some lorries here getting loaded up now that is kind of prime real estate right in the heart of Southwold and so it was deemed that actually it would be better to move that distribution center outside of Southwold and they've done that and the distribution center is now up here in uh, the outskirts of Raiden and it then left this brownfield site so this is kind of Southwold's equivalent of Canary Wharf really um, so over the years, and then perhaps if I skip forward a little bit, you might be able to see the change over over the years. 2011, well, this is when it was completed. So in 2011, you can see that actually this area has been transformed. And if I perhaps try and get a better picture, there we go, 2019. That's what this area now looks like. So we have 34 residential properties at the back here. There's a cafe that you can see. This is Adnam's flagship store. And again, I'll drop the man down here so you can see the frontage of that. This is probably Southwold's busiest shop, I would say. It's full of uh, nice things to buy, lots of homeware things, but also you can buy all of Adnam's products here. And uh, you'll see that there will be a queue outside this, um, this door when you come. With current COVID restrictions, they have a limited number of people in at any one time. And they have a queuing system that goes on here but you can walk down this street and as you walk down this street you'll come around to the back of the Adnam shop and this area has got a very nice outside cafe good for teachers to note that very good place we can get free wi-fi nice sausage rolls and salads and snacks and things and, and good coffee and tea um, there's a nice pop-up shop here this is now um, actually a stationary shop and um, it changes quite frequently. But down here, this is the main part of the Adnams regeneration, and this is the, uh, the housing that they have installed. So the idea with this was that they were gonna create housing with a coastal theme, and they've recycled actually some of the coastal assets. These are old groins that were on the beach up until 2006. They were replaced by newer ones, but the old ones were kept and they've been used throughout this redevelopment. And you can see them making little kind of um, flower beds and, and uh, kind of marking posts for the parking bays. One of the issues then with this redevelopment, the idea was to create this kind of fairly close-knit coastal community, a little bit like a Cornish or a Devonshire town. Um, and it's nice. It's a, it's a nice, calm, relaxed space. And lots of people are quite happy with the way that it now looks, certainly an improvement on the old industrial site. But one of the issues is, is that you'll notice in the windows here, a sticker representing that this is a holiday rental you'll see that outside there are these key safes and in most of the windows you'll see there's one there um, a, a sign representing and another that these properties are available to rent to think another one there too so despite the physical improvement in this regeneration the actual ambition of making this a close-knit local community um, has not really been fulfilled and so Many students choose to study Southwold's regeneration because it's a nice, concise location. Um, you might choose to go broader and look at the actual role of Adnams in shaping the identity of Southwold or the role of Adnams in Southwold as a whole. It's something that we'll look at um, as part of your kind of prep work as well. But that's useful to know where that is. Um, from Adnams um, re, um, regenerated area, 
it's very easy to get to the high streets. Not quite sure why it zoomed out so dramatically as that, but it has. So there's Tibby's Green, Adnams area. This then is Southwold's High Street. And Southwold's High Street is nice and simple because it's essentially one long street, pretty much starting from Adnams here. You'll notice on the corner here, there's a fat face door. This area has also been recently regenerated and improved and extended. Um, but this is pretty much the end of the high street. The high street then is about a six or seven minute walk from one direction to the other. But if you're walking this way, kind of in a south easterly direction, you're making your way towards the marketplace, which is here. And you can take a left hand fork at that point and make your way out towards the town beach. Or you can take a right hand fork at that point and make your way down towards what's known as the Dean's Beach. So the marketplace is quite a nice place for me just to uh, take you down to and to uh, tell you a little bit more about. In the marketplace, the most um, prominent building is this one here, and that is the Swan Hotel. So the Swan Hotel is Adnam's flagship hotel, uh, undergone a significant multi-million pound redevelopment in recent years, probably in the last three or four years. But it's been a fixture on Southwold's High Street for century, you know, for over a century. Uh, to stay here is not cheap at all. Uh, to stay here costs a significant amount of money. I think actually probably when this built, this photo was taken, it was actually undergoing its redevelopment because you can see that some of it's boarded up. It certainly isn't at the moment. And um, there will be people sat having lunch and very civilised drinks in the windows here as you walk past. The town hall, hall is next door. There's an entrance to Adnam's Brewery Tours down through this little... Um, gateway here which will be open when you're here not to say you should go on a brewery tour uh, this is useful to know that that's a co-op there where you can get your meal deals and anything else that you might need and then that is looking then down Southwold's main high street where there's lots of quirky independent stores lots of nice things to go and see uh, but the identity of Southwold's high street is quite unique and that's one of the themes again that people choose to investigate this is the marketplace then and uh, depending on the day that you come there may well be a market going on here as i say there's a left hand fork down there important to know that there's a very good chip shop down that street and that will take you out to the town beach very good butchers here they also do a very good line of food for, for lunch if you're interested tesco's there and then if you continue following the um the road you'll come to a place called gun hill where there's some very grand buildings and um where it's a very nice part of the beach too so let's take you there so um gun hill is south of the high street so we've kind of spun around a little bit here now one of the things that you'll notice in the residential areas around where we're based in the um southwold theater is that most of the houses there are terraced houses as you come south of southwold's high street the houses generally become detached and much grander you can't really tell from this image, but this is an elevated part of the town, which is um, looking on a hill out across the sea. And you can see that the beach here is nice and wide. It's nice and sandy from this part south. It's backed by dunes and it's a very popular part of Southwold, particularly the, the shoreline. This end of the beach is known as the Dean's Beach. And it is generally considered to be more natural. And some people prefer to come here because of those reasons with nice, you know, unmanaged um, section of shoreline here. With nice sand and, and very natural kind of sand dunes. Um, the beach and the sand dunes protect Ferry Road. This is a low lying road that runs along the back of the sand dunes. And there are several houses along there, including a, a car park and some toilets. And there's a cafe here. This cafe is literally based on the start of Southwold's seawall. So this is Southwold's start of their kind of official hard engineering um, defences to protect against coastal erosion. So the seawall is a, you know, a really important aspect of Southwold's coastal management because it obviously holds the line against any future coastal erosion. But it also acts as an important kind of economic and social space as well. Some students choose to investigate that as an issue and they look at the socio-economic contribution of the seawall. Social because actually about 90 percent of visitors to Southwold will come to Southwold to visit the beach and to visit the seafront. And one of the things they choose to do all year round is to have a, a stroll, a walk, a run or a, a push in a pushchair along the prom. 
Um, so strolling along the prom is a very popular thing to do in Southwold. And you can see at the back of the prom, these things, these are beach huts and Southwold has iconic beach huts, about 200 or so of them. Um, guess how much a beach hut costs to buy in Southwold? At this end, about £165,000. At the po less posh end, at the cheaper end, north of the pier, about sixty to £65,000 so you can get a cheap one at that end. But yeah, literally it costs more than a house in our nearby town of Ipswich. Um, you can get a, a beach hut in Southwold for um, you know more than the cost of a, an average house in Ipswich. Um, these beach huts are generally um, more, you know, essentially just a garden shed, really. They haven't got any electricity, any running water, you're not even allowed to sleep in them overnight. Um, but they are very, very much in demand, and I think there's a waiting list for people who want to, to buy them. Um, there's also, as well as the beach huts, several cafes along the prom. This one in particular down here is a good one. It does a, a bacon sandwich and a coffee for three pounds, which is worth knowing. Um, at this end of the beach, you can see though, there's clearly lots of deposition, lots of depositive material, lots of sand, and um, we've got a nice wide sandy beach. So in terms of our coastal processes, this is an area where there's clearly coastal deposition. As you come north from the Dean's Beach and move towards the pier, um, you come to an area which is perhaps more obviously managed and you can see these wooden groins that are uh, in place along the beach designed to protect the uh, beach from being transported. Longshore drift is a process which is evident along Southwold shore, um, largely because the waves here approach Southwold at an angle and have got the potential then to move the material away from the town. So we use groins, a system of them, to retain the beach and, and make sure that there is a beach in front of the town because it's so important to the tourist economy. So you can use those groins um, for your field work. You can look at the success of them, the impact of them on the coastal morphology, the effectiveness of them. Um, there are seven wooden ones which are accessible and uh, are there for measuring and, and, and for looking at. Conveniently, the start of Southwold's hard engineering down here at the uh, cafe at the Dean's Beach up to the pier, which you can see up there, is almost exactly a kilometre. So we have a kilometre's worth of um, hard engineering south of Southwold's pier, which is handy because some of you may choose to do coastal field work and choose systematic sampling of things like perhaps beach profiles or beach width or beach um, height above against the seawall or maybe even longshore drift tests. And you may choose to do them then at systematic intervals, perhaps of maybe 100 metres along this shoreline. And you might then have one at 100, 200, 300, 400, etc. And uh, we can provide you with a trundle wheel so you can accurately measure out those distances. And uh, you'll be able to use those then to systematically sample along, along the shoreline. Southwold's Pier is there, you can't miss it. And um, it's really worth exploring and getting to know, particularly if that's what your study is on. I'll talk more about what the pier is like um, in the presentation video. Um, but you'll see that from this view of the pier, it's clear that there is a large car park to the north of it. This is the main tourist car park in Southwold where most day trippers will arrive. There's a, a coach park at this end of it and um, there are toilets here as well. There's also several places in and around this area where you can get ice creams and coffees and things like that. Generally then, this is where most visitors to the town would park. Um, most visitors then would go to the pier and to the town beach and wouldn't go to this part of the beach. We know this part of the beach as North Beach. And North Beach has been significantly impacted over the recent years by the hard engineering and the coastal management that's gone on south of the pier. So one of the things about groins is they're very effective generally at stopping longshore drift. And the problem with that though, is that you can get beach starvation. So north of the pier, we have significantly lower sand levels than previously and that has therefore impacted upon the characteristics of the beach here you can see that essentially there isn't really a beach uh, north of the uh, the car park that's impacted upon the um the beach hut prices they are now less desirable at this end because those people that own a beach hut here have got less of a beach to 
to play around with. So very few people actually make it further north than this point, and actually that's a, a definitive kind of line I need to draw in the sand with you. Um, this is the point here at the end of the pier car park where you're not permitted to go unattended. So you are able to go along this point and th through the end of the car park here as long as you're with me. The reason for that is that this is kind of semi-private property. This is owned by the Environment Agency, but mainly for a kind of a health and safety reason, really. You can see that the sea wall here has got a kind of a green tinge to it. And it's covered in a thin layer of very, very slippery algae. And we've actually had a couple of people that have slipped on this algae, even though they've been told not to walk on it. They've slipped on it and, and you know, come up with kind of significant bruises and bumps. So I have to attend uh, with you if you're wanting to go up to this point, which is fine. It's no problem at all. And it's useful to get to this point because actually one of the things that we have in Southwold, which is really useful, is a, de a definite point where the sea defences stop. And the sea defences stop at this part of the beach known as Eastern Bavance. And at Eastern Bavance, we've got the end of Southwold's hard engineering represented by this final rock groin. And then from there onwards, we have an area of exposed undefended cliffs these cliffs made up of sandstone and clay very vulnerable to coastal erosion and very rapid obvious signs of coastal erosion at this point i'll talk to you in a presentation about mr boggis mr boggis's house is here and you can still see the remains of mr boggis's sea defenses here which are still protecting his house and uh, the other property to the right of him here as well historically Mr. Boggis installed sea defences, his own sea defences that stretched all the way into the distance here. And this is one of the good things about looking at Google Earth is that you've got this ability to turn back the clock and see how the coastline has changed. This may be something that you look into if you're looking at a study to do a coastal erosion. So let's just do that. If I click on this here and have a look at Eastern Bavance um, back in 1945, that was where Mr. Boggis's house let's is, was then. Let's compare it to how close it is to the sea now. And we've gone up to 1999. And let's go back to 2020 if we can. There we go, 2020. Now in 2020, you'll notice that there's a house here that has looked as if it's been demolished. And it has. That was demolished around about Christmas in 2019. If I just skip the clock back a little bit to 2011, you'll see that there's an extra house appeared here. So these two houses since 2011 have been lost. And actually, even back in 1999, so just over 20 years ago, there were four houses along here. And now we are left with just the one. So we average about three to five metres worth of coastal erosion along this shoreline each year, which is massive, which is huge. If I can try and find an, an image from about 2005, you will see Mr. Boggis's, ah, that was perfect, Mr. Boggis's DIY sea defences in place. So this is his house here. This is where the, um, where the, the beach now is. So this area has all been eroded and this is the material that he was dumping onto the beach and it stretched for literally miles. And um, that's been a huge ecological disaster since that happened um, but yeah you can use google earth to see historically how that um, previously looked so let's zoom out and let's just get a perspective of where we are those were some of the key sites then in southwold from the fieldwork center to eastern balance is probably about a 10 to 15 minute walk to the dean's beach is also about a 10 minute walk in any direction within the kind of the urban area within south Old, you're talking about seven or eight minutes so it's a very compact manageable space but it's useful for you certainly to watch this video before you come maybe re-watch it but i would suggest as well going on to google earth and just having a explore of south Old. think about the sites that you're going to need to know about where are you going to need to visit? Where are you going to need to familiarise yourself with? Do you know how to get to those places? Obviously, you can ask me those questions on a day, but it's going to be worth your while getting familiar with Southwold. OK, hopefully that's helped with some basics and uh, we will see you soon.